Pathfinder Red of the Righteous, classic Dungeons and Dragons RPG, is finally here. After over 150 hours with it in beta and final release, I am ready to give you my thoughts on it, you dungeon dwelling bastards. Note that I still haven't finished it, because it is as long as my, unfortunately not, but it is long. Game, I mean. I'm also Dungeons and Dragons noob. Usually I play game from start to finish before posting reviews, but I have spent so much time already with it that I feel like I can pass judgment. Might do an updated review after 300 hours or something like that, depending how this one goes. Played Kingmaker a bit, but didn't get that deep into it. Wrote some guides for Fextra Life on Kingmaker, but it was all beginner stuff, so I won't compare Wrath of the Righteous to Kingmaker that much, except graphically. Wrath of the Righteous looks much better and a bit less cartoonish from what I remember, which is automatically a big plus for me. Visual and sound effects are great, animations are not bad at all and the music is epic. In video and audio department game kicks ass. There is voiceover, which is well done, but only for some main characters. Fine by me, as I don't consider voiceover in CRPGs that relevant. Great if they are present, don't care if they aren't. Now to answer burning question from Kingmaker players, which is how buggy is it? At release date there will be less bugs obviously, but state of the game overall is not good. Not bad as Kingmaker though, but there are game breaking bugs in Kingdom Management and through normal play. That is why I have stopped playing with Kingdom Management, because it started taking away focus from the game itself and because often battles on the map crashed. Mind you, game breaking stuff is gonna be patched quickly, but considering how complex and large the game is, some might still remain. Thankfully there is an option to set Crusade, which is Kingdom and Army Management, to Automatic, so it can't fail, but you can still play normally without it. Unfortunately that leads to other Crusade quest related bugs, because once you set Crusade to Automatic, it can't go back to Manual, so it is quite buggy as expected, but not unplayable, far from it, your experience will be better no doubt. Kingdom management is back, to similar extent as in Kingmaker, and next to that we have army management now. Army management is something like Heroes of Might and Magic, but way worse. In my opinion it doesn't add anything to the game, it is far from polished and just takes away resources and focus that could have been spent elsewhere. Battles are very clunky, with bloated stats that are hard to understand at times, battles like tactical approach, slows down story progression. Kingdom management is more or less the same and it can be positive or negative, depending how you look at it. I never got that far into it because it doesn't interest me that much, but from my experience it is a positive, unlike army management. Definitely interesting aspect that has place in Pathfinder. Army management also makes sense, but it needs much more work to be considered an asset, cause at the moment it just takes away from the game. Wrath of the Righteous introduces new classes and subclasses, making already very complex character progression even deeper. When it comes to build diversity, this game is second to none. I won't talk too much about it, because everyone who plays or has played Dungeons and Dragons knows how the system works. 25 classes, each with 5 or 6 subclasses, 12 races, mythic bots and multiclassing option. Mind blowing amount of options. Now add on top of that insane amount of spells and items and you get the game where you can spend hundreds of hours just learning and optimizing builds. If you like build complexity, depth and diversity, look no further. This game is for you. One thing that Pathfinder system focuses a lot when it comes to character progression are items. There are tons of items that can modify and improve builds. Incentive to explore and look for new reward in form of gear piece is always there. Important thing is that most of the loot is unique and not just same shit with random stats. Visual design of armor and weapons is fantastic with lots of details. Elemental effects on weapons look especially great. 
I do have to criticize lack of appearance customization options. Even though equipment looks great, you are gonna have color matching issues all the time where supposed badasses look like pride parade. I would suggest some kind of cosmetic slot where we can equip helmets, match colors, change it to costumes and things like that. It would go a long way into making characters more believable. Also more faces, helmets, body types, hairstyles and portraits are needed for character creation because it is a bit lacking from aesthetical aspect. Let's talk about World of Pathfinder and how game is structured. It starts off with liberation of Canabres where party travels through various districts, solving quests and dealing with demons. Love the tension and atmosphere while in Canabres. It all feels connected and well done. Then world opens up where we travel like in Kingmaker, making move by move, discovering new places and making our way towards City of Dresden. Lots of things happening along the way, lots of locations being visited, puzzles that need solving and enemies rears that need kicking. After Dresden, more of the same. Think of world structure like this. You get story related location on the map, bunch of small places in between, some story related encounters and side quest related stuff. Then things kick off upon reaching story destination. Liberation of Dresden is also quite epic. Story related locations are so much better than the rest, more cohesive and epic. Side quest and other locations feel sometimes disconnected a bit, with locations being too small. Was not a fan of world structure since the first game, as it is definitely not one of my favorites. Don't get me wrong, smaller locations are not bad by any means, they just feel lackluster after epic story related locations. There is some backtracking too due to some puzzles not being solvable during early game. Puzzles are interesting enough throughout the game and add a different dynamic, respite from all the action. Backstory of this world is quite good with lots of details about previous kingdoms like how they fell apart and how they function now with characters from various places telling home country related stories. Corruption mechanic is introduced instead of camping supplies, so whenever a party rests on world map or at any location that is not Crusade Camp or HQ, corruption rises. There are three stages of corruption, each debilitating characters more and more. I am on the fence about this mechanic because it makes sense in a way, but it also leads to a lot of backtracking to camp or HQ to remove corruption, which is especially often on higher difficulties. Characters with high lore religion skill can offset it a bit, but it is not enough in my opinion. Lore serves story in a great way, so we have full picture about what the hell is happening. And hell is exactly what is happening. Story is epic. It starts off epic and continues being epic throughout. Angels, demons, big decisions, good, evil, cultists, betrayal, destruction, liberation. Absolutely fantastic. Story missions feel like participating in an epic movie with constant threat, tension and feeling you are up against it. And you get to lead crusade against demons, I mean bloody hell. One of the most epic stories I have ever witnessed. It is so grandiose with that feeling like everything could fall apart in a matter of seconds. Feeling that you and your actions matter and in this game they matter a lot. Also learning our own backstory is interesting because we know almost nothing about ourselves at the start. I won't talk about story details at all anymore because it is no spoiler review. You'll meet many characters along the way with their own backstory and some of them become companions. NPCs are interesting and charismatic. I can't think of any dull character in the game. Almost every single NPC has palpable charisma of sort explaining their character in detail. From crazy lawful zealot Hulran to mysterious storyteller, you have it all here. Companions are interesting and vastly different from one another. Their characters are well depicted thanks to great writing. These answers are wrong. The correct answer is this experiment has taken quite a surprising turn. I would never have a bull. Of course everybody knows. Yep. And a cow. I'd like to ask you to stop prompting them, but it seems it appears the experiment has yielded results which are as unexpected as they are incredible. Baphomet's cultists have not the slightest idea about who Baphomet really is. 
They all come with personal quests and possible romance options. It is amazing how each companion develops its character more and more throughout their story as you will see them at best and worst, often affecting opinion about them. Their quests come with some big decisions too at times and if they become unhappy there might be separation incoming. Choice of mythic path, which is big moment in the story, also affects companion satisfaction with you as a leader. Mythic path offers great choices that affect character progression. Consider them upgrade to the character as they can't be detrimental, but it depends on the build you are running how effective they can be. I won't name mythic choices since I feel like it would be better to leave discovery to you. Now we get to combat, which you are going to be doing a lot of, and it is great. Two modes, turn based and real time with pause, so none can bitch and complain. Except that turn based needs patching because it is quite buggy at times and very choppy with animations ending abruptly. They need to fix that. Nonetheless, switching between these two modes can be done on the fly, even during combat. There is also a way to slow down time while in real time with pause, but only when holding V or Shift plus space. I don't understand why they couldn't add toggle option for slower real time with pause next to holding the button. Seems like a missed opportunity to me. Anyway, combat is fantastic as it implements Dungeons and Dragons rules set that offers wide variety of playstyles and group compositions. One of the strongest aspects that I love about properly done D&D games is enemy variety. I don't think there is anything that can rival D&D when it comes to enemy variety and detail. Humanoid races, undead, demons, beasts, spirits, gods, elementals, mythical creatures, and each come with their own set of strengths and weaknesses, forcing player to have more than one approach available at all times. It is exhilarating composing a party that can rival everything that comes their way, and no matter what you come up with, there will always be certain enemy type or encounter that party is weak against. I play Pathfinder on core difficulty due to my lack of knowledge about the D&D system and it is quite challenging. Game offers plenty difficulty settings to customize to your liking thankfully. There are unfortunately huge difficulty spikes where I had to lower difficulty because it pissed me off having to fight the enemy with insane number of attacks, armor class and attack rolls. Some boss fights are just cheap. In most cases there is a way to overcome certain challenge due to insane number of possibilities, but game throws sometimes ridiculous challenge at the player that is far more difficult than previous one. There is also a thing of balance, which from what I've read is ever present problem in the end due to sheer number of classes, spells, abilities and items. It is impossible to balance it in my opinion, as some classes are clearly better than others, leaving some abilities and spells underutilized. That is to be expected in these types of RPGs. Most important thing is that combat is fun and tactical. With good graphics, details and decent animations, it all plays out in a way that you want to do it again and again and again. I do have some gripes with combat and some other things. Pathfinder loves to drain levels and attributes, which can be especially annoying with added fatigue from traveling and corruption debuffs. It can stack to ridiculous levels and it is difficult to get around it unless hundreds of restoration scrolls and potions are bought. On hard difficulties, dealing with enemies with insanely high armor class at times can be giant pain in the ass while debilitated. Also, attack roll numbers displayed above enemies and characters make no sense. Display total attack roll versus total AC, not partial number that means nothing. Retraining and hiring custom party members is too expensive. Overall, whole economy part of the game is not great. Items picked up along the way don't have high value, which is a problem when financing crusade army and your party. Great weapons, armor and accessories are expensive as hell and so is trading gold for finance points to buy new army units. Next to all of that try hiring custom party member. Prices are completely out of whack. Verdict time. Pathfinder Red of the Righteous has tremendous potential. Even in its worst state game is still very enjoyable. 
Sure, it can be frustrating at times due to difficulty spikes, weird economy, badly done crusade part when it comes to army and map battles, crashes and game breaking bugs, but even now it is still better than Kingmaker release. How many of these issues will be patched by tomorrow when game officially releases I cannot know, but I have faith that they are on top of game breaking stuff. It is just that there are so many amazing things in this game that is hard to wait for all of it to be patched. Combat, character progression, difficulty options, epic story, interesting companions, music, rewarding loot, big decisions, replayability. Unfortunately, due to negatives at this moment I can't give it more than 7 out of 10, which means good game. However, I can see this game easily reaching 9 out of 10, which would mean amazing and you know I don't give that score lightly. When bugs are dealt with, game more balanced, turn based improved, cosmetic options and layer of polish added, this game is going to be easy 9. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for many Pathfinder guides.